when did your feelings start to take on this incredibly uh, uh, obsessional quality? Was it the Arab-Israeli war after you came to this country? Well, or? I, I suppose that it, it came to the fore where I began, where, when I began to focus on it. Uh, erupted as soon after the, the, the 1967 war where the, the Arabs had lost and the Israelis uh, won. And uh, my anger at the American people's reaction to the loss of the Palestinians and, uh, and the Arabs. It was after a campaign speech in Oregon during which Kennedy promised military support for Israel that Sirhan targeted him for death. Sirhan is now serving a life sentence at the California Correctional Facility at Soledad. He agreed to speak exclusively to Inside Edition with the hope that it might help him get paroled. One speech that sets you off doesn't, doesn't deserve a terrible fate like that. No, I, I agree, and I sincerely regret the, the, my, my actions for that. I was young, I was, you know, immature, I was wild. I, I, I really didn't have the the ability to sit back and reflect on it as just one speech, one, perhaps one pandering speech to a, you know, a potential block of voters whom he was appealing to. And now, of course, I realize that, and, uh, and, and I wish that I could reverse all my actions concerning Robert Kennedy. But why did Robert Kennedy, the, the friend of the downtrodden, become the focus of this hatred? Because to me, he was my hero. He was my champion. He was the protector and the defender of the downtrodden and the disadvantaged. And I felt that I was one. And to have him say that he was going to send 50 phantom jets to Israel uh, to deliver nothing but death and destruction on my countrymen, that seemed as though it were a betrayal, sir. And it was sad for me to, to accept, and it was hard for me to accept. And just uh, didn't, and, and the, my, all my hopes were focused on Robert Kennedy. I was his supporter. That was the quality that Robert Kennedy stood for, was hope. There was that loss of hope at, at the same time, say. You know, and this is the part that really, that really sort of angers me, that this, this double standard of, of, of the politicians, and particularly Bobby Kennedy. On the one hand, in, during the 60s, uh, during the campaign, he was all uh, in favor of, uh, of stopping the war in Vietnam, and he wants to bring our boys home. And in the, in the next breath, he wants to send more bombs and more uh, phantom jets to Israel to kill human beings, but, but Palestinians in this, in this instant. In the months before the assassination, Sirhan kept a diary. In it, he wrote over and over again, RFK must die. I don't even refer to them as diaries, really. They were just uh, scribblings more than, more than you know, detailed uh, by, you know, uh, entries in a, in a diary. But you no. said RFK must die by... That's what I recall that. June the 5th, and things like that. Yes. But I mean, throughout that period, were your feelings just getting stronger and stronger, or what? They must have been, obviously, but... I can't say that there was any deliberateness to the killing. At that, I mean, they, not all my feelings were, you know, were, be, were drumming towards that goal of, of assassinating Bobby Kennedy, no. But uh, it was just in general. That, uh, I, and it wasn't just typical of me as an Arab. I think that a whole Arab community in this country uh, felt, you know, uh, downcast and crestfallen by, the defeat of the, by their defeat in, in, the, in the Middle East. But again, this, this terrible punishment for one speech about phantom jets, I mean, haunts people, I think. It does haunt people. But suppose that you were a black or Hispanic living in America and had Robert Kennedy as your ideal champion, as your savior in America, and had you all of a sudden heard him say that he was going to spend, send some 50 jets to destroy all the black or Hispanic pop populations in this country. How would you have felt and what would you have done if you thought that you could do something about it? You know, and that's what you thought, you could do something that's exactly, about it. Well, imagine though, 
that if you were a German or if you were a Jew in, uh, in, in, in Hitler's uh, Germany, and if you had the opportunity to assassinate Hitler, uh, I'm sure that uh, they would have tried to, to do that. What, to me, I felt But there's no comparison between Hitler and Robert Kennedy. Agreed, agreed. But the principle so it seems to be similar. You said in the trial, um, I killed RFK with 20 years of malice of forethought. Now, you're, you obviously did not know him. What were you trying to say? I tried to really show that the Palestinian problem did not just suddenly erupt with the shooting of Bobby Kennedy that there was a, a history to it that dated back to 1947, 1948, uh, when, the, the, when the, the state of Israel was created forcibly on the Arabs, and when the Palestinian Arabs were forced to uh, evacuate and uh, be expelled from their homes and lands uh, to accommodate the, the new arrivals, the new Jewish arrivals in Palestine. I feel that having experienced what I have experienced in Palestine, atrocities, the killings, the violence, and just the uprooting of, you know, of massive uh, populations, uh, it did have an impact on me, I suppose, more than it did on, on others. By, by, by saying this, I'm not trying to discount the seriousness of the killing. During the trial, six months after his brother's murder, Senator Edward Kennedy wrote a letter to the court asking that Sir Han's life be spared. It was, it was a supreme act of mercifulness. You know, when, when I read that, when I, when I heard it read aloud in court, I was stunned by that, by Senator Kennedy's uh, magnanimity towards me. I didn't feel that I was deserving of it, to be honest with you. The jury recommended the death penalty anyway, and the judge ordered Sir Han taken to San Quentin, there to be put to death in the gas chamber. When you went to death row, was that a surprise, or did you think, well, if this had happened in an Arab country, it would have been an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and well, I'd be dead anyway? It's, it's an interesting question. If, if I had shot Robert Kennedy in an Arab country, I seriously doubt that any Jew, Arab jury or Arab court would have convicted. And if they did, the punishment would have, would have been nothing more than a slap on the wrist. Knowing the dynamics involved, that Robert Kennedy was an advocate of full support for Israel. That spell on death row, um, what were particularly your recollections of that? It was really, uh, it was a realization that I was spending the, the last days of my life. And uh, I, 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 since I really felt that I was going to be put to death for, for my offense. And I just tried to maximize as much as I could, you know, what was left of my life to, to realize what, uh, what I might have missed out on in life and what there was that I could have, you know, reversed or corrected. Palestinian refugee Sirhan Sirhan could not vote. Instead, his day was spent polishing a skill he learned in a California public high school. I decided to go in the, to, the, to the firing range and, and shoot my gun. And I spent the whole day over there. It was really a good uh, sort of an NRA type of a get-together at the gun range. And that's really the, the the, my, my, my original interest in, in acquiring the gun, not shooting Robert Kennedy. What happened on that terrible day? Well, after I finished my activities at the firing range, I started heading home. And on the way home, I stopped by a restaurant, Bob's Big Boy, and had dinner and socialized for a while, leaving the, the restaurant. I picked up, I bought a copy of the newspaper, the LA Times, and uh, started the leafing through the pages to reach the, the sports section. And, ha and while doing so, I noticed uh, an advertisement announcing a parade that was planned to be held that evening, and it was to celebrate the, the Israeli victory of, of, of a year before. And it was to, to be a sort of an anniversary parade for the, for the for the Jewish community in LA, I take it. And uh, that sort of incensed me. And I said, well, I have nothing else to do tonight. I'm gonna to go down there and see what those people are up to. 
Sirhan got lost and ended up at a storefront campaign for a local official. Then he was told of a really big party at the nearby Ambassador Hotel. I didn't know that Senator Kennedy was down there at, that night. You know, if it was going to be a party, a big party, I could pretty well lose myself in it. And, and there was a lot of drinking, a lot of bars. One of, one of the reasons why I drank the Tom Cones is, is that I was, I'm not a drinker. And it was easy for me to, to drink. And it was, a, it was a hot night that night. At the early hours of it, I, it was sort of enjoyable to me. But uh, it, it ended in, in, in tragedy, unfortunately. At the time of the shooting, I was not really in full control of my senses, Mr. Frost, because I don't feel that a, a rational, uh, calm, cool, and, and a, a person who has his wits about him and is aware of his environment would actually pull a gun and aim it at another human being and shoot at him with the foreknowledge that after you finish shooting that that person is going to be you know, dead. Shortly after midnight on the 5th of June, Senator Robert Kennedy entered the ballroom to a thunderous reception from his friends and supporters. The California primary was his, and that guaranteed the Democratic nomination for president. Kennedy delivered a rousing speech, thanking those responsible for their loyal support through a tough and controversial campaign. It was the shining moment of his political career. My thanks to all of you, and now it's on to Chicago, and let's win there. It was also his last. In a spontaneous decision to avoid the pressing crowd, Kennedy and his entourage chose to exit through the hotel's kitchen pantry. That change in course changed history. told that he was scheduled to traverse a route that was totally different from the one that he actually took. And uh, had he, had he, for the stroke of luck or, or fate, you know, had he taken the original route which he was in, intended for him to take, he, he might have been saved and he, he might have been, you know, become president of the United States. I was never part of any conspiracy. For me to enter into a plot with another person to kill a third is totally out of the question. If, if you knew enough about human nature, as I have experienced in prisons, where, if, where two people had gone into a conspiracy and uh, one of them ends up on death row and the other one ends up uh, a state uh, witness. Looking at it in, in retrospect, I wish that there was a conspiracy, because had there been one, it would have aborted as soon as it was you know, begun, and Robert Kennedy would, uh, would still be alive. I had you know, extinguished a, a, you know, a great star, you know, a world savior, perhaps, a champion of all mankind. And uh, it's hard for me to live with this experience myself. And it's really, it's very painful for me to live with, to be honest with you. But, but uh, I'm a human being, and I have to adjust and, and carry on with my life. I never dreamed of ever offending the American system of government or frustrating the votes and the hopes of, of millions of Americans. And having done so, sir, I, I can't say anything but up, that I apologize for having done that. That's all I can offer is my apologies and my remorse in, given my life situation, Mr. Frost. And I sincerely a sense of do shame that. too. A sense of shame, regrets uh, also. My mother, every time she visits me, tells me to make my peace with God and to, to be a better person. I can't offer them anything but my remorse and my understanding of their suffering and their, and their grief for what happened. And I sincerely, again, feel that. If I could resurrect Robert Kennedy and give him back to them, I'd do it just like that.